Leadership in the field of future aircraft carriers will remain with the Americans, while Russia has chosen its own path. In today's world, aircraft carriers are the most powerful, efficient, and versatile means of dominating the planet and imposing one's will on other countries. According to the former Commander-in-Chief of the Royal Navy of the United Kingdom, British Admiral Mark Stanford, countries with strategic international influence need to have aircraft carriers. Given the geopolitical changes and the impending redistribution of human civilization, the role of aircraft carriers is becoming even more important. This video examines the future role of aircraft carriers, which will symbolize the will of nations in the decades to come, and how the world's leading nations view this instrument of war. Let's start with the undisputed leader in this area, the United States of America. This country has the largest fleet of aircraft carriers in the world, currently numbering 10. These third-generation aircraft carriers, such as the Gerald R. Ford, are the basis of their future dominant role. It should be noted that the total deck area of these supercarriers is twice as large as the total deck area of all other aircraft carriers in the world. The United States' plans for the future are to replace second-generation aircraft carriers, such as the Nimitz class, with new and more powerful third-generation aircraft carriers. The Gerald R. Ford aircraft carrier, which was launched on May 31, 2017, has already been commissioned. The next in this class, the John F. Kennedy aircraft carrier, is due to enter service in 2024. It is also worth noting that this class's last 10th aircraft carrier is scheduled to be commissioned in 2058. These long-term plans demonstrate the United States' determination to maintain its leadership in the aircraft carrier field and increase its ability to dominate the world stage. Let's take a look at this unique $17 billion mega machine and what makes it worth calling a third-generation aircraft carrier. The technical characteristics of the Gerald R. Ford are impressive. Although its dimensions are comparable to previous generation aircraft carriers, 1106 feet long, 256 feet wide, and 134 feet high. Its internal capabilities are quite different. Let's start with the fact that despite its massive displacement of 100,000 tons, the Gerald Ford is as low on enemy radar as the other carriers in the strike group. Thus, this machine monster can operate effectively in a war zone without risking early detection. Secondly, the main heart of this ship is two new A-1B nuclear reactors capable of producing a quarter more electricity than their counterparts on previous generations of ships. These reactors are designed for 50 years of operation and do not require refueling during this period. Their power is enough to drive the ship to a speed of 30 knots, which is 34.5 miles per hour. At this speed, it is possible to easily catch up with torpedo boats from the World War II era, which reached this speed only in attack mode. So the Gerald Ford is an amazing third-generation aircraft carrier that combines unique scale, skyscraper-like dimensions, and advanced technology. Its design and capabilities allow the United States to stay ahead of the curve in the aircraft carrier field and ensure strategic influence in the world. Thirdly, Gerald Ford will be able to carry up to 90 airplanes, helicopters, and unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, the bulk of which will be fifth-generation F-35C multi-role fighter bombers, a special deck version of the F-35 fighter equipped with electromagnetic catapults. It is worth noting that these F-35Cs have twice the range of the F-35A and F-35B. Even a comparison with the Nimitz demonstrates the superiority of the Gerald Ford. Although the Nimitz can also carry up to 90 aircraft, it is not the fifth generation. In addition, it is worth noting that Gerald Ford used electromagnetic catapults, which have much more power than the steam catapults installed on the Nimitz. Therefore, the new supercarrier can provide 160 sorties per day, and even 220 at its peak, while the Nimitz with its steam catapults provides only 120 sorties. This striking difference in weaponry makes the Gerald Ford 30% more powerful than the Nimitz, not to mention the already superior performance of the F-35C compared to fourth-generation fighters such as the F-14 and F-A-18. It should be noted that the electromagnetic catapults have not yet reached their design capacity and have problems with frequent breakdowns. However, these problems can be solved over time, and this new technology will become even more effective. And what about other countries in terms of building new aircraft carriers? Particular attention should be paid to France. On December 8, 2020, French President Emmanuel Macron announced the launch of the Port Avion Nouvelle Generation, or PANG, a project to build a modern aircraft carrier for the French Navy, which will be equipped with a nuclear power plant. According to the plans, 
The new aircraft carrier is to join the French Navy fleet in 2038 and replace the existing single French aircraft carrier R-91 Charles de Gaulle, which has been in service since 2001. According to preliminary data, the new French aircraft carrier will be much larger than the Charles de Gaulle and have a total displacement of about 75,000 tons, a length of up to 984 feet and a width of 262 feet. However, it is worth noting that it will be smaller by a quarter compared to the American supercarrier. The power plant of the new ship will feature two new type K-22 nuclear reactors with a thermal capacity of 220 MW each, as well as three shafts with a total capacity of 80 MW with propellers. These new energy management technologies will ensure the ship's efficient operation. Thus, France plans to create a modern aircraft carrier with a nuclear power plant, which will significantly exceed the size of its predecessor, the Charles de Gaulle, and will provide greater efficiency and maneuverability in military operations. The total power to be generated, including electricity, will be 110 MW. The full speed of the new ship will be 26, 27 knots, which means that it will be slightly less fast than the Gerald R4. The new French aircraft carrier will be able to carry 30 modern 6th generation FCAS fighters, which are being developed jointly by France and Germany, with the French company Dassault Aviation as the lead contractor. There will also be two or three Northrop Grumman E-2D Advanced Hawkeye long-range radar detection and control aircraft, as well as several UAVs and helicopters. The aircraft carrier will use a horizontal catapult takeoff and horizontal landing system with an airborne finisher. For this purpose, American equipment will be used, including three 295-foot E-Mails electromagnetic catapults and AAG air finishers from General Atomics Corporation, which are successfully used on new American nuclear-powered aircraft carriers such as the Gerald R. Ford. In general, it can be noted that France, as a junior partner of the United States and NATO, is trying to ensure its aircraft carrier capabilities, and compared to the U.S. aircraft carriers, its capabilities may be somewhat smaller. Unexpectedly, South Korea also expressed a desire to have its aircraft carrier. This unpredictable decision can be explained by South Korea's proximity to China, which is rapidly expanding its military capabilities, forcing the country's leadership to pay more attention to strengthening its military forces. In this context, South Korea is seriously considering adding an aircraft carrier to its naval flotilla. In line with this initiative, the South Korean company Hyundai Heavy Industries signed a memorandum of understanding with the British company Babcock International on September 1, 2021, to cooperate in the construction of the Republic of Korea's first light aircraft carrier under the CVX program. The total cost of the project is estimated at 2 trillion won, or $1.8 billion. This project has developed a model that expands the operational capabilities of the aircraft carrier through an improved takeoff and landing system design, as well as the introduction of an integrated combat control system using unmanned aerial vehicles and boats. The project is scheduled for completion in 2033, and the new aircraft carrier from Babcock and HHI will be 862 feet long, 154 feet wide, and 45,000 tons displacement. The ship will have a projected top speed of 27 knots. It will be able to carry up to 16 short takeoff and vertical landing fighters, such as the F-35B on deck and another 12 fighters in the hangar. In August last year, the Ministry of National Defense of the Republic of Korea confirmed that 20 F-35B fighters would be purchased for the CVX project. In addition, helicopters for the Marines will be deployed on the aircraft carrier. This project reflects South Korea's growing interest in international military cooperation and its desire to strengthen its defense capabilities in light of geopolitical challenges in the region. The story of promising aircraft carriers among Western-oriented countries is coming to an end. Unfortunately, the United Kingdom, which recently launched the Queen Elizabeth and Prince of Wales aircraft carriers, faced a problem with finding funding to complete them and make them operational. This situation has led to doubts about the need for another aircraft carrier. In comparison, let's look at the situation of potential Western adversaries such as China and Russia. China currently has two aircraft carriers. The first, the Liaoning, is based on the former Soviet aircraft carrier Varyak, which Ukraine sold to China in 1998. The second, the Shandong aircraft carrier, is purely Chinese and was designed as a Type 002 carrier launched in April 2017. The most exciting element is the third aircraft carrier, which is called Fujian. It was launched on June 17, 2022, and is based on the Type 003 project. 
Little is known about this new aircraft carrier as China, as always, maintains strict secrecy. According to official data, the total displacement of the Fujian aircraft carrier is more than 80,000 tons. However, American intelligence reports that the displacement of this Chinese ship may even reach about 100,000 tons. This indicates that China is seriously seeking to increase its military capabilities at sea, particularly in the area of aviation capabilities. Analyst Robert Farley argues that the Type 003 will be the largest and most modern aircraft carrier ever built outside the United States. Experts also suggest that the Fujian is likely to be largely based on the design of the unfinished Soviet nuclear-powered aircraft carrier Ulyanovsk, but without integrated heavy weapons such as the P-700 Granite anti-ship cruise missiles. The Type 003 aircraft carrier is expected to use three electromagnetic catapults and be capable of carrying up to 40 Chinese fifth-generation fighters. One may wonder why the number of aircraft on the Fujian is limited to 40, while the USS Gerald R. Ford is capable of carrying 90 aircraft. This is likely due to the fact that the Fujian will be equipped with a non-nuclear propulsion system, which will limit its power capabilities compared to nuclear aircraft carriers such as the Gerald R. Ford. However, despite the limitations, the ability to operationally use such a powerful aircraft carrier as the Fujian is still impressive, and it may be a well-deserved achievement for China. As for Russia, they have no plans to build new aircraft carriers. The country has only one, the Admiral Kuznetsov, which was built in 1991 and is currently undergoing major repairs. Russia believes that it is more promising and economical to build small ships equipped with hypersonic missiles, such as the Zircon. Whether this concept will be successful is a question that time will answer. It is worth noting that the construction of new aircraft carriers, the cost of which starts at nine zeros, is an extremely costly and complex task. However, these aircraft carriers provide the state with significant military influence and presence in the international arena. They can be an important tool of military strategy for countries seeking to maintain influence in global events. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. Your support will be the best reward for us. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss new interesting videos about new weapons and military technologies. Thank you for watching and see you soon.